stand this morning? Let's sing my Savior. My Savior, Redeemer, lifted me from the mighty clay. For my forever, I'll never be the same as you came. Morina Tufano, good to see you here this morning. Kia ora, hui hui tato, good to be here. Welcome. Welcome to uh, everyone that's come down here. Man, you're quite widespread today. Alright, good to see everyone and also um, all the people that are upstairs as well. So, uh, welcome to Northgate this morning. Okay, so uh, the family life, there's a few things that are happening. So obviously, uh, if you were having been around for the last few weeks, it's guess who's coming for lunch today. Um, so if you were part of this process, 
um, then it will be giving you an envelope at the end of uh, the service. So uh, don't open your envelopes until you get into your car though. So and inside that envelope, if you are a host, it will say who is going to be at your house. Okay, if you are going to someone's place, you open it up and you will then know whose house you're going to. So it's all quite exciting. Um, so if you're part of that, make sure you, that you don't leave until you get that, put that envelope and open it in the car. If you have um, missed the cutoff and you want to be part of this, guess who's coming for lunch, then please um, have a chat to Paul um, at the end because I'm sure we can find room for you somewhere at someone else's house. So um, please, if you want to be involved, please just see Paul at the end there. It would be really great to have you part of that. Okay, uh, again, the, the, uh, the next slide there is uh, our pastor that is coming. So... We've been knowing this for a while now, uh, about a month, I guess, or so. Um, so just keep uh, remembering them in their prayers as they finish up at Cambridge Baptist um, and as they prepare to come to Northgate. So it's quite exciting about that. Okay, yesterday we uh, had an awesome opportunity to go out and help the Reynolds family um, and put some tyres on the stack uh, out there. So this is the group of guys that actually uh, went out there and helped. So a massive thank you for all those that went out and helped. Um, and there is a few sore bodies from the people I talked to this morning. Some of us fit guys are probably all right. Um, don't know about you, Murray. Um, but, yeah, it's, uh, thanks for all the help there. It's a real blessing to go out and help the, that, that family that is really struggling with um, workers who are unwell or injured and things like that. So it's great to be part of a church family. Okay, there is a, um, a prayer meeting that's coming up on Monday, and it's a Zoom meeting. Okay, so it's, you can stay at home in your own place and you can watch the screen and be part of uh, the prayer group on, uh, on Monday. And so there's got details on, on the Facebook page, but if you want some more information about how to book into that, you can get in t contact with the office. They'll let you in on the code and what to do there. Who has had a birthday this week? All right. Jackson. Okay, and I know that there's got a, a birthday box upstairs as well, so hopefully there's got some people upstairs that are, are going up for birthday. So, um, anyone else? No. Come stand up here, Jackson. Okay, well, not quite. Okay, um, so when was your birthday? Uh, Thursday. Thursday, and did you do anything special on your birthday? Uh, I had the day off, so. All right. So just a quick plug. If you want to buy a new Audi, <laughs> come and come and talk to this guy. All right, he'll sort you out. Has he got a deal for you? <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. Amazing. So uh, yeah, we'll, we'll give. He's got some raisins in there. Yeah, let's pray for you. Lord, we just pray for Jackson. Lord, thank you for the, uh, the awesome guy that he is, the guy who is, is full of life. And Lord, I pray that uh, as he goes into this coming year, 20 years, his 20th year, Lord, I pray that you'll just uh, guide him in the decisions that he makes and, uh, and, and, and through his work. And everything that he does. Ask us in your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Okay, Paul, over to you. Thanks, Andrew. Good morning, church family. How are you? It's really exciting. It's uh, Sorry, I am interacting with you up the top as well, but uh, it's hard when you're, you're sort of down and you know there's two groups of people, but there's equivalent uh, almost upstairs what there is downstairs at the moment so it's it's uh, pretty great and uh, we want to welcome you to Tipekatanga. Tipekatanga is the name of this house of our church Tipekatanga, the upward way and we're going to be praying to our our lord jesus christ who is king of Tipekatanga, as we know and the reason why we meet here this morning uh what i want us to do is just spend just some time quietly because each one of you will know someone who needs your prayer this morning. 
whether it be an emotional issue they're going through, whether it be a health issue, whether it be an interpersonal relationship issue. Let's just spend some time quietly, and then I want us to pray as a church family for our connects that we have on a weekly basis in our community and around. So, so let's just take some time at the moment, and we're just going to spend the next minute or so just quietly lifting up those people you know before the Lord, and then I'll end by praying for our connects into the community. Let's pray. thank you that you are creator God you are the God that stands above all others and as many people not only in this auditorium and upstairs pray to you there are people right throughout this land right throughout this nation right throughout this world talking to you at the moment father thank you that you hear every one of our prayers and Lord we commit those people we've been praying to you knowing that there is no better person to bring them to than you knowing that you know everything we go through and will meet us at our point of need and so father the prayers that have been lifted to you in this place this morning we pray that your will be done and lord as we continue as a a church to reach outside of these four walls lord help us to connect well especially with uh, uh, the series we're starting going into today meals with jesus and uh, the uh, potential of, of developing relationship again lord as this country is in lockdown level three in auckland and level two outside of auckland father we ask that the one thing that we will concentrate on would be keeping the relationships alive that we have father we want to honor you in all that we do and as we come across our connects within our communities within our workplaces within our organizations we belong to within our neighborhoods Father, within our schools, our colleges, our our universities, Father, we ask that we would represent you well. Lord, that we would build into the relationships that we, we currently have, and Lord, those that you would bring across our path, help us to make a difference in their lives. Father, we pray to the creator of the heavens and the earth who can do abundantly more than we could ever hope and dream. And so, Father, may our eyes be opened once again to the reality of who we talk to. And Father, as we start this morning, we ask that everything we do in this place would be glorifying to you. Lord, as we've we've begun with uh, just what is happening in the life of the church and and before that, just opening in in, in a time of worship, Lord, we want to again acknowledge we are here to meet with you this morning and so my prayer would be as we leave this place to head into the mission field that you have placed us in father that we would connect well we would be encouraged we would position ourselves well to hear from you today and lord that we would leave changed as a result of meeting with you and so father this time is yours help us to divorce ourselves of what we've uh, been going through throughout this week And help us, Lord, now to fix our thoughts and minds upon you. For we want to say you're worthy of that, Father. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. All right. So we're starting series Meals with Jesus. Okay. um, So I need three volunteers. Do we have a volunteer from Lighthouse? Do we have a volunteer Lighthouse to help me out up the front this morning? Someone? All right. Involves food. All right, so it's going to help you out. Okay, so do, do I have a volunteer from um, Reboot? 
All right, and someone for purpose? All right, here we go. Okay, so before we start, I, you guys just trust me, right? Okay, just trust me, okay? Um, you'll be all right. Just trust me. Might put this on, that one looks like you. Put those on. Cover your eyes. No peeking. It's alright. Can you see anything? Alright, cool. So this is going to be a bit of a taste test this morning. Okay, so I'm going to be giving you some items of food, okay, and you need to try and tell me what sort of food it is, okay? So let me just get ready first. Here we go. All right, so here's the first item, okay, so... It's a jet plane, all right? But you need to tell me what flavour it is. Someone put your hand out. Okay, put it in. And see if you can work out what flavour it is. Taste that. Right, any ideas, Lauren, what flavour do you think your one is? Tell me the colour. I don't know, I can just say toothpaste. <laughs> Ta to okay, keep chewing that, it might come back. Alright, Sam, what colour do you reckon your one was? Um, tastes like a raspberry. Raspberry, I can't remember which colour it was, open your mouth. Okay, Patrick, do you know what flavour what flavor do you reckon your one is? What colour? Green. Oh, yes, got it. <laughs> All right, and Sam, you're off pretty sure I gave you a raspberry one. What about you, Lauren? Um, orange. <laughs> no, you had the purple one. Okay, you finish that one off. Okay, next thing. Okay, you need to tell me whether this is twisties or rations. Okay, where you go, taste those. Patrick, twisties or rations? Twisties. Okay. Sam, twisties or rations? I think it's rations. Okay. Lauren, twisties or rations? Mm, twisties. All right, so we've got two twisties who are correct. All right, give them a round of hand. Okay. Okay, so this next one, just bear with me, all right? Hang on a second.
do you think that was, Patrick? An act on a burger. A cheeseburger. Okay, Sam, what do you reckon it is? A uh, McDonald's cheeseburger patty. Okay, and Lauren? I don't... <laughs> I, I think you're going to struggle because you didn't actually eat much of it. So he's probably going to struggle to get that. And uh, so you guys were right, it's a McDonald's cheeseburger. <laughs> All right, you guys, they're good. Okay, so let's take your masks off and thanks for your help. Tell you what. This will help get rid of that taste. You can you can you can choose a you can choose a jet plane out of there for your help. Take your mask off. There we go. Grab one of those and you can head back to your seat. Yeah. Alright, give them a round of applause. Right, does, so how does that fit into Meals with Jesus, you say? Uh, something like this. So we're going to be hearing through this series uh, loads of different stories about Jesus and how he went and had meals with people. Okay? And so a lot of these stories that you're going to be hearing, you've actually heard before. And like you children probably would have heard in Lighthouse or um, bedtime stories at home and, and things like that. Um, but it's very much like the food that these guys ate at the front when we hear stories quite a few times before. Now you're eating something, but sometimes you don't, you don't get the full flavour of it, or you don't quite understand what, what the story's about, or understand the food. The food was blended up, wasn't like a hamburger at all, um, but it actually was a hamburger. Yeah. <laughs> and so, and the, that's the cool thing about the Bible. We're going to hear these stories that we may have heard before, but each time we read a story in the Bible, the cool thing about it is that we always get something different. We get a different taste or a different flavor about what the story is all about. And so as we go through this Meals with Jesus, that's what we're going to be hearing parts about. So as we start the, this, new this new series, we're going to be sitting at the Lord's table. Kind of. At the Lord's table. And we want to be listening and hearing what the Lord has to tell us about those stories that he's going to be speaking to us. So we get lots of different um, preachers like we normally do, and uh, so we're going to be hearing about those. And we want to make sure that we get the full flavor of that story. So when you hear the story, that you oh, I've heard that story before. Let's not switch off, because God can speak through those stories in many different ways. And so that's, uh, that's our hope for um, the series, um, and that as we get uh, go through these series, that things will uh, work inside our lives and will change, and we'll become better people, we'll, we'll love the Lord a lot more, and we'll learn to love others better. So let's pray together. Lord, we just want to thank you for uh, Northgate Church this morning. We thank you for um, a real privilege that we've got for a, a, a wide range of great preachers and speakers. Lord, and as we head into this new, uh, new series, Meals of Jesus, Lord, I pray that, that you'll touch us, touch us that, we'll, that we will learn, and that we will change. But even though we may have heard these, these stories before, there's still so much more that we can learn from them. And so, Lord, we just commit um, this new series to you uh, and the preachers that are going to be teaching us also, Lord. I pray that you'll, that you'll use them and that you'll speak through them. And I'll pray for Morris too um, as he comes and, and speaks later on in the service, Lord that you'll just clear his mind and that you'll give him the words that, that you want us to hear. Ask this in your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Okay, Ross and your team. All right, morning church. Um, just as we enter a time of worship, um, uh, I think it's um, really good just to have a fresh um, perspective each time we read the Word of God and, and, um, 
and I think for me, I've, I've heard it said, go back to the Gospels many times and read the Gospels regularly, and I've uh, been reading through John. And um, it was, uh, this morning's reading was quite um, encouraging, just thinking of, um, uh, been thinking of devotion, and, um, and also this morning um, we're talking about meals, and um, the passage about um, Jesus springing change when he went to the to these people's homes and bring salvation. And um, this passage says, um, and just, uh, it works so well with um, what we're thinking about this morning as we worship. And it's in John 6, it says, Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry. And he who believes in me will never go thirsty. And, it, and then moving on to verse 37, All that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose none of that he has given me, but raise them up at the last day. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Let's uh, worship him this morning. And um, I've been quite challenged this week about devotion. And, um, uh, you know... Um, I, th I think um, the Gospels, as we read the Gospels and see how uh, devoted Jesus was to the Father and doing the Father's will. And um, let's be challenged with that as we worship Him this morning. Lord Jesus, we just pray that you would meet us again here this morning, Lord, and that, Lord, we'd be encouraged, Lord, that your name would be glorified. And, Lord, that we could, we could really pray, not my will, but yours be done. Uh, in Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. this morning.
Lord Jesus, we praise you this morning. We want to lift your name high this morning, Lord. Thank you for the hope we have in you, Lord. It's all about you, Jesus.
up um, to share with us this morning uh, through Zacchaeus. Um, yeah, looking forward to hear what you have to say. I can't see myself up there, but when I wa- look at other speakers on the YouTube channel, I notice the feathers going up behind their heads. And <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if it's really appropriate, you know, being that... <laughs> Uh, I could probably move across a bit here. (laughs) 
Am I better or worse? <laughs> worse. Oh, oh no. <laughs> it goes the other way up, dear. <laughs> oh, dear. Which way do I go? Hey? I'm fine? Cool. <laughs> what people will say to make you feel good, eh? Kiora. Uhui Tato. It's good to be here together, all together, all together, up there too. I'm aware that you're up there, but as Andrew said, it's hard to sort of talk in both directions. Um, so, I don't know if how many of you have actually ever had the opportunity and the privilege and the challenge of doing what I have to do this morning, that is be a speaker or a teacher or a preacher in front of a whole lot of people. But it comes with some pressures, and uh, one of them is always the time pressure. And so I'm blessed today because <coughs> being a COVID level two service this morning, we are unable to have communion. Uh, apparently there was no problem having other things, <laughs> but <laughs> for certain select people, which raises the point that uh, food is a favourite topic. So I'm expecting you're all going to come from Sunday to Sunday to hear more and more about the meals that Jesus had with people. Food was central to pretty much every culture, in fact, to life. But why I'm blessed is because, because there's no communion, then the management came to me and said, look, Morris, the program is a bit thin. You can take as long as you like. <laughs> No, no, no. I, I, I did exaggerate a bit there. I just took that as a personal liberty, actually. <laughs> so part of what I have to do, which does a time robber off what I have to say, which is my particular meal that I'm going to be dealing with, is the fact that uh, it's the beginning of a series and I've been given the responsibility of introducing the series, as well as giving some historical setting to where we're all going to be at. So... Theoretically, if you're all here every Sunday, the other speakers don't have to give that background if they don't wish to. So, first of all, to introduce the series and to say that if, you've seen, if you saw the newsletter, which you get by email these days, you would have noticed I gave it a particular topic, a, a heading. And so part of your mission today is to be aware of how that topic fits, you know, you'll hear it come up eventually. You go, oh, that's why you chose that, right? And also there are, one of the other preacher's challenges is rabbit holes, because we do an enormous amount of study and preparation, and you can get a, a, a little idea, and you go, I wonder what that means? And you, next thing you come up from the rabbit hole of that search, and you realise you've found out a whole lot of interesting stuff, but you can't tell everybody that, because you ain't got time. So uh, rabbit, rabbit holes are one of my little things. But you might find that I leave something undefined. Don't go into it too much. That's a little rabbit hole for you to take away and go down. So how would you complete the sentence, the Son of Man came? There are three ways the New, Testament's com New Testament completes that sentence, the Son of Man came. First of all, there's the Son of Man came not to ser be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Secondly, the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. And thirdly, the Son of Man came eating and drinking. Now, the first two statements are statements of purpose. Why did Jesus come? He came to serve and to give his life as a ransom to seek and to save the lost. And so those two first statements tell us why he came. The third statement is a statement of method. How did Jesus come? Does he come with an army of angels? Does he come on the clouds of heaven? Does he come with a blaze of glory? No. He comes eating and drinking. And some of you may have a little bit of trouble with that, especially the second bit, you know. And we have this thing about that perhaps 
But that's what it says. He came eating and drinking, and we see plenty of illustrations of that as we read the New Testament. And you're going to hear about more of them in the topics that follow this one. Jesus was into being with people at mealtimes. His mission strategy included the long meal, stretching into the evening. He often did evangelism and discipleship around a table, probably with some grilled fish, a loaf of bread, and a pitcher of wine. Even when he was pressured and had an important agenda on his plate, Jesus used meals to give his friends and random people he met a most precious gift, the gift of time, time with Jesus. There's nothing more precious than that, and he was willing to give time. And this series, beginning today, is called Meals with Jesus, and it's based on passages that we read where Jesus gives a gift of time over a meal. So that's what we're doing. Now for a bit of the historical setting, which, you know, it, it's a bit like this. We all know the food. We all know. We, uh, you know, we've heard the stories. You're going to, you know, all the stories that we're going to cover in the next, in these five sessions. So, but some background. First of all, Israel or Judea, as it was called by the Romans, was a client kingdom of Rome using the Herodian d dynasty as Vichy rulers. Now, just want to say that so the Romans, they had, they controlled this land, Judea, and they had the Herodian kingdom, kings, were running it for them under their control. Much like the French government during the Second World War was a Vichy government under the German rule. The cultural climate of the day can be characterised, in my opinion, by one word, hate. The Herodians were hated by the Jews because they were cruel, mean, self-serving self -serving dudes, and they were Edomites, rabbit holes. The Romans were hated by the Jews. Also, the Romans, so the Herodians were hated. The Romans, the Herodians were hated. The Romans were hated because they were the real rulers, and they were cruel, mean dudes as well. They all took their, the Jews' money, and they did little for them. And as a result, the Jews did a lot of rebellion and mayhem. They were troublesome to the Romans. They were known, Judea was known as a troublesome little pocket of people. An interesting rabbit hole that I will take you down here is that I discovered that in that rebellion and mayhem thing, that not only did, was there a, um, a rebellion about AD 70, which was put down, temples torn down and all of that. But in AD 132, well after all the stories we're going to hear, the Jews revolted again, and the Roman emperor Hadrian changed the name of the country. So he did this to punish the people for their rebellion, the Jews. And he renamed the region after the Jews' two traditional enemies, the Syrians and the Philistines. Now, if you go back into the Old Testament, you know straight away on what I've said is true. The Syrians and the Philistines were enemies with the Jews all the way through. And uh, so Hadrian renamed Judea Syria Palestina. And hence, we know this area today as Palestine. Now, I'll leave the rest of the thinking about that to you. Think about this culture of hate. The Herodians and the Romans were hated. And then the Pharisees and the, and the Samaritans were hated. And this kind of culture and atmosphere of hate continues down through the centuries to today. And I sort of feel, as I read this, the impression I got was that in the day of Jesus, when he was there, Israel was actually not a nice place to be. So with that background, now to our first meal with Jesus. And that brings us to checking out tax collectors. 
text stories for us. Now, everybody's got a text story. Even pastors have text stories. I've got a text story, but I'm not, I won't tell it to you. But I'm, I've had involvement with the text department the Inland Revenue. And most people come out of those encounters and not feeling all that wonderful. And I've got, actually Pam and I have got personal friends. And the wife, she works for the IRD. And she has a really good job at the NHS. You know, she does a lot of good. It's helpful. But I have another person that we met once and we, I knew her husband. And then we met in a social situation and he was with his wife. And I didn't know what she did. You know, and I, I did the, uh, you know, what you do, the, what they call the conversation stack. I don't know if you've learned that, you know, but I use it. And it always comes to the point when we say, well, how do you occupy your time during the week? Oh, I've got a job. Oh, good. And um, where, where do you work? She says, oh, I work in finance. <laughs> and, of course, I go, um, oh, really? So who do you work for? <laughs> oh, a company in town. <laughs> And I said in the end, so who do you work for? Because I, I couldn't get this. And she said, oh, Inland Revenue, she says. <laughs> and I said, and, and then I, I just said, oh, it's cool. Good, got a good, good job then. She was quite high up. And, and then she said, actually, the reason I don't like saying is because I usually get a very bad reaction when I tell people where I work. And it can spoil a social occasion. So I don't tell them. So we do have our, our sort of connections, but... Taxes in Jesus' day were a little bit different from IA, IRD and pay, pay as you earn and all that stuff. Taxes in that day, tax collection was a franchise business. And the Romans sold the task of collecting taxes in any area to the highest bidder. The franchise holder simply collected as much money as he could, as he could squeeze out of the people, and paid the Romans the contracted amount and kept the rest for himself. So the more he could get from the people, he had a set amount to give or a percentage. He passed that over, the rest he kept. There were three places in, in Israel, Judea, where taxes were collected inland. It was Capernaum, Jericho, and Jerusalem. And our stories today, because there are going to be two meals we're going to look at quickly, which are, um, we're going to look at two of those places. Now, the wealth that was accumulated by tax collectors was legendary and didn't help with their relationships with people because they made a lot of money out of it. We'll see this later. But the wealth that was collected came with a personal price tag. And this was the price tag. Nobody loved you. Everybody hated you. You were nothing. In fact, tax collecting was officially on the list of the seven despised trades seen as traitors and collaborators, tax collectors were despised so much that they were reckoned to be outside of Abraham. Even as a Jew, they were outside of Abraham and beyond redemption. The Jews of the day described... Now, some of you guys, yesterday we saw a picture. I was there. I don't know if you spotted me, but I was helping shift tyres off onto the, onto the silo stack. And the uh, thing was that between where we parked our cars and where we got to stack silage, we had to walk down a race and was walking right by the milking shed. And as we went down there, the cow dung was three centimetres deep. <laughs> and us more wise and experienced people who had chosen to wear gumboots <laughs> suddenly felt pretty good compared to the guys who were in their sneakers. And if you went home with with your sneakers on and didn't leave them at the gate, then you would have announced you're coming inside the house without saying a word. It stunk. Even though I had gumboots on, I, I was pleased, I, you know, I still got the smell. And so this is how tax collectors were described by the Jews of the day. They described tax collectors as the dung on their sandals. Smelly, horrible, not to be engaged with. Yet, Jesus, a Jew, reached out to them, loved them, shared his time with them, shared himself with them, 
and shared his good news with them. In a culture of hate, hate in all directions, including tax collectors, Jesus loves even them. So our first meal is of the two that we're dealing with with tax collectors today is Matthew. And uh, the context of the story is that it's in three Gospels, but we're going to be reading it from Luke chapter 5. We know that miraculously, uh, after miraculously providing a boatload of fish, Jesus has called the fishermen, Jesus, James, and John, to be his disciples. And so then, after he's uh, done that, that miracle of the boatload of fish, called these three guys to be his disciples he then crosses to the other side of the lake um, the lake of sea of galilee to his hometown of capernaum which is one of the tax centers and another miracle when he gets out off the boat he heals a paralyzed man you know the famous one about letting the guy down through the roof that happens now as he comes into capernaum that miracle and then from there after this Jesus went out and saw a tax collector by the name of Matthew sitting at his tax booth. So I don't know where we are here, but we're not there. I mean, that's the word I just read, but we should be in a, in a long reading here. So I'll just read it. Those of you who've got phones, look it up. We're in Matthew chapter uh, 5 and verse 27. After this, Jesus went out and saw a tax collector by the name of Matthew, sitting at his tax booth. Follow me, Jesus said to him. And Matthew got up, left everything and followed him. Then Matthew held a great banquet for Jesus at his house, and a large crowd of tax collectors and others were eating with them. But the Pharisees... <coughs> And the teachers of the law who belonged to their sect complained to his disciples, why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners, Jesus answered them. It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but those who are ill. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Now the second tax collector is Zacchaeus. And we're looking at this one in Luke chapter 19. The context of this story is that it's a long time after the Matthew story, which is at the beginning. Jesus is in his hometown. Now, uh, this particular story is recorded only in Luke, and Jesus is traveling south, heading to Jerusalem, leading to his crucifixion. Jesus travels along the border between Galilee and Samaria, teaching, teaching and mir doing miracles along the way. And as he approaches Jericho, he pauses... And heals a blind man. So he's, a, he's approaching Jericho. This is another tax town. And he pauses there and he heals a blind man who follows him along with a crowd of witnesses walking into town, all praising God for the miracle that's been done. Then Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. And a man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, He has gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor, and if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today, Salvation has come to this house because this man too is a son of Abraham. 
for the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Now, let's look at these two stories in parallel. We've got Matthew and we've got um, Zacchaeus. First of all, think about the differences between the men and their stories. First of all, their locations. So Matthew is in Capernaum on the Sea of Galilee, Jesus' hometown. Zacchaeus is in Jericho, a meeting point of many trade routes that go through there and therefore was very affluent. Lots of money changing hands there. And then financially out of that, we read Matthew's wealth was observable. His home could accommodate a big crowd. And we're, we read that he held a great banquet. So when we're talking meals with Jesus here, we're in the upper range here. We're not talking about, guess who's coming for lunch? We're talking about a banquet. He's really got the money and he lays it on. And so he's got a bob or two. Now, for the sake of people who have uh, not up with Western colloquialism, colloquialism, has got a bob or two, goes back to uh, just meaning that he's got a lot of money, even though a bob was a very small amount of money in our terms today. Just a phrase we use. It's a rabbit hole. And then Zacchaeus financially. Now, we read this straight-out statement in the Scripture. He was a chief tax collector and wealthy. So different towns. Oh, one thing I didn't mention was that Matthew is a tax collector and Zacchaeus is a chief tax collector. So they've got different ranks. There's another difference. So different towns, different ranks, and slightly different money power because of that. What about the sim similarity shared by the men in their s stories? Matthew and Zacchaeus are Jews, tax collectors, have friends, and have money to burn. So money to burn. They've got lots of money. They could, they, if they had them, they could have taken a, a very high denomination note and lit their cigar with it, which is what the rich guys used to apparently do. Money to burn. So Matthew and Zacchaeus have all of that. Both men turn on a feast at, for Jesus at their home and include other guests. Another thing about the story that is similar is Jesus, speaking of Jesus now, Jesus is comfortable. He's comfortable in the company of these tax collectors and sinners. Secondly about Jesus, Jesus is criticized for being with those people, both cases. And then thirdly, Jesus ha gives them the same message both times. The Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. So how did Matthew and Zacchaeus find themselves with Jesus at home? What's the pathway for them to these meals? How did they end up getting there? Well, first of all, Matthew. So in chapter 5 and verse 27, we read, Jesus went out and saw a tax collector by the name of Matthew sitting in his booth. Jesus spots Matthew and he stops to chat. Matthew is found by Jesus. He's found. Jesus went out and he found Matthew. Now Zacchaeus was a little bit different. In Luke 19, 3 and 4, Zacchaeus wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him since Jesus was coming that way. Now this is a favorite. This is a famous, this is the famous one. This is the one mostly we talk about when we're talking about Jesus and tax collectors and going for a meal and everything, Zacchaeus, because there's songs about it, you know? There's a kid's song we used to sing about Zacchaeus being a little lamb and up the tree he went, you know? Yeah, I know, I can see Rachel singing it already. Good on you. And uh, so the difference here is that Zacchaeus went looking for Jesus. Who is this guy? Man, he's famous, he's heading there. All the rest he'd heard about Jesus, I want to see him. Zacchaeus was a seeker. One man is found by Jesus. The other seeks Jesus. 
Both men then have Jesus around for a meal. Matthew seems to most likely have invited Jesus. I don't know exactly how it worked because we don't really know. It's not, it's not told to us how he actually got there. Certainly he gets up and leaves everything behind and goes with Jesus. But what happened between there and ending up eating together is questionable. Probably, I'm guessing, Matthew invited him along like, look, just go home and have a feast. But Zacchaeus seems, this is a completely different case, well spelled out. Jesus invited himself. I want to come to your place today. So I imagine that somehow Zacchaeus managed to get in the gate first. And he says to his wife and probably the servants he had, hey, a celebrity rocked into town and he invited himself to lunch. And his wife says, who? Who? And he says, you'll never guess, Jesus is coming. Now, let's not worry about the wife and servants, but what are the outcomes from this visit of Jesus in the lives of Matthew and Zacchaeus? You see, when you meet Jesus, there will be an outcome just because he's there. Just because he's there. Jesus turns up in both these cases. He presents himself there. And his presence makes a difference. Matthew's response, Luke 5, 27, 28. Follow me, Jesus said to him. And Matthew got up, left everything and followed him. And you might think, what difference did this make in Matthew's life? He follows him, they have a meal together, then what? You could think, yeah, well, off they went, they end up at Matthew's place, have a feed, and then Matthew gets back to work. But no, something has happened. Matthew has been called to repentance, and his commitment to Jesus is full on. In the Gospel of Matthew, yes, the author of Matthew is the one and same person, the author and the tax collector, the tax collector, collector wrote the book they are one and the same and in it there's a full list of the disciples given some of the other of the 12 disciples have some extra information included one an extra name then the sibling connections described who their father was one's described as a zealot another as a betrayer but only matthew has his job listed he is Matthew the tax collector. To remove any doubt, Matthew has outed himself. He's told us plainly, he is that terrible sinner, the seriously despised one, the lost sheep who Jesus found, called, restored, and saved. Matthew became a disciple that was the outcome for him. He left it all behind and joined the team and went with Jesus. He was full on. How about Zach? How did Zacchaeus get on? But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor, and if I've cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Zacchaeus gives money to the poor, puts things right with those he has ripped off, not just the mosaic, mosaic law requirement, not the minimum, but over the top. He went over the top with what he gave back. His heart had been changed. He suddenly cared about what he'd done. He cared about the people he'd ripped off, and he wanted to put things right. And Jesus' response? So we've had Matthew's response. He becomes a disciple. Zacchaeus' dis response? He becomes a new man inside that is shown on the outside. His faith is displayed in his works. And then Jesus says to him, to Zacchaeus, today salvation has come to this house because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. 
a son of Abraham. The ones who could not be redeemed according to many of the teachers and Pharisees of the day. Zacchaeus is a changed man. He once was lost, but now is found. He's been restored. His repentance is shown by change that is costly. Zacchaeus' story is expressed in another song, not the one that Rachel was singing, but uh, this song has, it tells the story of Zacchaeus. For those of you who are older, you will know this is number two, retention, in the, number two in the back of the book, a special section. And, <laughs> and, it, and the verses tell the story of Zacchaeus, but the chorus says this, Oh yes, my friend, there's something more, there's something more than gold, that all your sins can be forgiven. There's something more than gold. Now I believe Zacchaeus, if this song had been around for him then, would have sung that all my sins have been forgiven is something more than gold. What are the challenges for us? Well, there's the Matt and Zach challenge. To find Jesus or allow him to find you. To repent, to follow, to find purpose, to do, to do what he says do what he lived to be like Jesus and then there's the Jesus challenge and there's yet another song that goes out of the highways and byways of life many are weary and sad and I thought about the many are weary and sad in that verse and I thought there are other people too and we've been engaged with some of them been involved in, in them and some of you others in here today have too in the last couple of weeks many are weary and sad but there are those who are lonely and blue there are those who are angry and scarred guilty and lost frail and pained desperate and stoned grieving and dark the Jesus challenges to make friends with those who don't know Jesus, wherever they are, whoever they are. Despised, lonely, angry, guilty, frail, desperate, grieving. Our challenge is to reach out into their lives with his love. To give him the precious gift of time, to give them the precious gift of time, to play with him, work with them, be there for them. Hey, even have a meal with them. Introduce them to Jesus in you just by being there, taking Jesus with you to the meal. The song that I last quoted is from, is called Make Me a Blessing. Out of the highways and byways of life, many are weary and sad. And it goes on, carry the sunshine where darkness is right. Make me a blessing. Make me a blessing out of my life. May Jesus shine. Make me a blessing, O Saviour, I pray. Make me a blessing to someone today. And I want to pray. I want to pray, first of all, for the people on that list that I put up there that's going to come back up again. I want to pray for these people because I believe these people here may are in this room. Yes, our whole community has many of these people, but this is a community too. And there are people amongst you who may well be just like this, and I want to pray for you. And then I want to give you the opportunity to pray for yourself. And there'll be another slide come up. And that will have an opportunity for you to think about yourself. And then I will pray to conclude. So three stages to, the, to my close out today. First of all, let's pray. Many are weary and sad, Lord. I thank you that by your power you can see into these people's needs. And in here, right today, there may be those who are lonely and blue, angry and scarred, guilty and lost, 
frail and pain, desperate in stone, maybe some way, grieving and dark. Lord, I pray that your spirit will come amongst us today and bring healing and the shining of your light into their lives. And Lord, there are those who still don't know you, who are here as seekers, or here as those who have been found by you and are still on the journey. Help them to come to a real step of faith where they find themselves following you and committed to you. I pray these prayers in Jesus' name for these people, Lord. Amen. And now for you. Maybe that part of the song, you could just pray to yourself. Make me a blessing to someone today, tomorrow, this week. Lord, I pray this prayer for myself out of my life. Lord Jesus, please shine. By your grace and your spirit, make me a blessing to someone today, this week. Lord, I pray for everyone here that they would have that sense of being channels of your grace and love, your presence, for your glory. Amen. Thank you, Morris. Can I encourage you? We may not be able to have uh, communion here as a church family, but it doesn't mean that you can't have it with your connect group. So we have a talk about that as you go into this week with your connect group leader, leader and um, see if that's something that you can partake in as a connect group together. I'll close with a, a final blessing. Kia tō, kia tato katoa, tata pai o tato ariki, a ihu karaiti. Me te aroha o te atua. Me, me te whiwhina tangitanga, ki te wairo o tapu, ake, 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 amen. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all forever and ever. Amen. So as we go from this place, um, we just re require the, the people that are upstairs, if you can go out the, um, the back fire exit, please, um, and the people down here in the main auditorium, just exit out through the, the main doors there. Uh, and just a reminder, those who are, do, guess who's coming for lunch, so Paul will be in his office, and he's got all the envelopes that you can open in your car as you leave. Um, so make sure you have a great lunch together, um, and if you want to be part of that as well, um, please please see Paul as well. And for those guys who are coming to my place, we've got leftover cheeseburger, um, and so just so you're ready for that. All right, have a good week, everyone.